Hello students, today we are going to learn about chapter 5 that is effective stress principle. Coming to the first content of this chapter, it deals with the definition of geostatic stresses, vertical stress or total stress. What do you mean by geostatic stress? Stresses due to self-weight of soil are mainly known as geostatic stresses. So, there will be many problems in foundation engineer, engineering which require a study of transmission and distribution of the stresses in large and extensive masses of soil. Some of the examples are wheel loads, transmitted through embankments or to culverts. So, the foundation pressures transmitted to soil strata below the footings. Pressures from isolated footings transmitted to the retaining walls and wheel loads transmitted through stabilized soil pavements to the subgraded below. So, in such cases, the stresses which are transmitted in all downward and lateral directions. So, estimation of vertical stresses at any point in a soil mass due to the external loading is very essential to the prediction of the settlement of the building, bridges and embankments. So, how the settlement of the building is taking place? That one uh, we have to uh, read about it. It's very important. So, at a point within a soil mass, stresses will be developed as a result of soil lying above the point, which point that is geostatic stress point, and by any structural or other loading imposed onto that soil mass. What do you mean by vertical load or total stress? When a load which is applied to soil, it is carried by the soil grains and the water which are there in the pores. So, the total vertical stresses which are acting at a point below the ground surface is due to the weight of everything that lies above, that lies above, including the soil, water and the surface loading. So, the total stress thus increase with the depth and with the unit weight also. So, the total stress is given by sigma, nothing but total load per unit area. Total stress is due to the self-weight of the soil and overburden on the soil. So, this is the ground surface. If you consider a one block, stresses are in this direction. Vertical total stress as the depth is considered as Z. So, sigma V is equal to gamma into Z. Z is a vertical stress. Okay. So, below a water body, the total stress is nothing but a, if there is a water body, there is nothing but the sum of the weight of the soil up to the surface and the weight of the water above this. So, soil plus water. So, vertical stress is equal to gamma z, that is nothing but due to this gamma z plus gamma w into z w. The total stress may also be uh, denoted by sigma z or just sigma only. It varies with the changes in the water level and also with the excavations. So, what about stress due to self-flow weight? The vertical stress on element A, if we consider element A here, can also be determined simply from the mass of the overlying material. This is the mass of the overlying material. So, if gamma represents the unit weight of the soil, so the vertical stress is given by sigma z is equal to gamma into what is the vertical distance z. This is the variation of the stress with the depth. It increases from top to bottom. What about the stresses in a layered deposit? Nothing but the sum of the all individual layers like the stress in a deposit consisting of layers of soil having different densities may also be determined as sigma z is equal to gamma 1 h1 plus gamma 2 h2 so on till gamma n hn it can also be written as summation i is equal to 1 to n gamma i into hi so if you take this example the vertical stress at the depth z1 this is a depth z1 is nothing but gamma z1 is equal to uh, sigma z1 is equal to gamma 1 into h1 at z2 depth it is equal to gamma 1 so it, uh, at the z2 it, it is equal to gamma 1 h1 plus gamma 2 z2 at stress uh, at the depth z3 it is equal to gamma 1 h1 plus gamma 2 h2 plus gamma 3 h3 so the variation is accordingly drawn here thank you